This is a follow-up to a video I did previously, the Nightnall Engine version 2.0, which I designed and built a while back. This version 2.5 worked out some of the kinks I had in the original version. For those of you that aren't familiar with my videos or didn't see part one, Nightnall is a shape memory metal composed of roughly equal atomic percentages nickel and titanium. Nitinol has the ability to undergo deformation at cold or room temperature, also known as superelasticity, and it recovers its original undeformed shape when heated above transformation temperature. The original video shared various designs I tested and tried before I eventually built this one. However, I didn't demonstrate it running properly as the basin that held the water was too small, so the temperature differential would quickly equalize and the device would only work for a few seconds. I was confident that the design was sound though and posted it in the previous video. Nevertheless, a few of the comments I received questioned whether the device actually worked, and rightly so, as I didn't properly demonstrate it working. So it's been on my to-do list for some time now to add the larger water basins and make some slight modifications to the original setup to better demonstrate the device working properly. This is the original setup of the Nightnall engine. As you can see, the water basin isn't very deep. Both hot and cold water are sharing the same basin, which helps to cause the water differential on each side to equalize far too quickly. So I removed the old basin, made the carriage holders further apart, and placed the weights on the opposite sides of the arms. This made more room for the basins, which are separate in this design. I wanted the basins to be a specific size and insulated from the heated water. That way I could handle them and move them around more easily. Metal basins become too hot to touch once you fill them with boiling water. So rather than searching dozens of websites trying to locate the specific size and type I wanted, I built them myself. I used thin aluminum for the interior, covered it in thin foam, and then overlaid that with aluminum tape. The interior was sealed with weather-resistant sealant. This was cheap, really easy to throw together, and it insulated the exterior of the basin from the heat extremely well. I could pick it up and move it around easily when it was full of boiling water. This is how the basic design works. The idea is pretty straightforward, and it's simple to understand. The fine-tuning takes some patience and care. For this version of the motor, I narrowed the carriage and extended the distance between the weighted arms. Here is the carriage being tested in hot and cold water to make sure the rocker was lined up and works properly. I ended up swapping out the original standard springs twice before I figured out the proper size and tension. The screws that hold the carriage needed to be longer to facilitate the new basins. This caused problems in stability, so I swapped the screws out for thin metal tubes. This extended from side to side and stabilized the movement of the carriage. The weights serve two purposes, they stabilize the carriage, but they also prevent it from moving too far in either direction. I added two small pieces to one side of the carriage on the device to keep it from dropping too far into the basins and locking up. I added a light counterbalance weight to one side of the carriage and ended up adding another piece of wood to one of the barriers to adjust where the rocker would repel itself. I'll simply move the barrier later. 
but I added a small piece of wood to it until I found the exact spot where the barrier needed to be moved to. After some careful adjustment, it started right up. I also angled the rocker until it was hitting the barrier at the correct angle. So if you build one of these, there are some adjustments you will need to make in order to get it working properly. But I wanted something with a little bit more power than a standard night and all engine. Something that did a good job of demonstrating how you could use something as simple as two night and all springs to power a heat engine. Now if you wanted to build a more powerful version, all you'd need to do is add more springs and increase the amount of deformation to the original shape of the springs. Here's the modified, finished version. Thanks for watching and do great things.